He is the new voice of talk radio, Alexander Danilov. And good evening, all. It's been a full stock market day for me. I just got off the phone with a great, um, a great trader, a guy who aspires to be um, a full-time options trader. Has been doing it and dabbling, and makes a good chunk of his income from that. Now, you all know how much I love stock, uh, the stock market, and options trading as a whole. Been getting in involved in futures contracts and trading futures, uh, and a whole host of other things. It's just my passion. Uh, another person who I know is very passionate about the markets um, is John Locke. He's actually my guest tonight. He's what I've dubbed the stock market innovator. He's created a bunch of amazing and successful trading programs, including um, the uh, AP2, uh, M2, the M3, the Rock System, which we'll be talking about tonight. Um, right now, um, John, thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate everything that you're doing in the, in the investing world. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate being on. Absolutely. So I've been introduced to you through uh, SMB Capital. Um, I've seen your name pop up a bunch of times. And uh, Seth Freud Burke, who's a great friend of the show and myself, um, had mentioned you. He was like, you should uh, think about bringing him on because we were talking about the rock strategy. And he's like, nobody would be better to speak about it except the guy who created it. So um, here we are today talking about it and tonight obviously talking about it. So I'd like for you to introduce what you do um, uh, uh, on a regular basis because there's a lot of education that goes in that and that's very important. I need people to understand that. But it, you're also a, um, a, technici a technician, a chartist, an educator, and you do so many other different things. So let's get into that, uh, what you do on a regular basis so people are more familiar with you. Yeah, yeah. Let me just tell you a little bit about myself and, and where I come from and so forth. I am both a retail trader and a professional options trader with SMB Capital out of New York City, and Seth Freudberg, obviously, is the uh, head of the options desk over there. And um, I'm also president of a company called Locking Your Success LLC, which is a trading performance coaching and mentoring company, and we specialize in helping people fulfill their dream of transitioning into full-time full traders through a process that we call the trading triangle. And... In the trading triangle, we focus on three main categories that all of us as traders need to be aware of. And the first part of it would be a long-term viable trading methodology. And it's a little bit more challenging to, than most people think to actually get a long-term viable trading methodology. The vast majority of traders think that they're going to stumble across or maybe they're going to buy this magic trade that's going to transform their lives you know, they put down a few thousand bucks and the clouds are going to part and the angels are going to sing and the troubles are going to be solved. And everything uh, I thought wonderful. that too. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I did too, actually, at one point. But, uh, you know, it, as you know, Alex, all us guys that have been at this for a while, uh, we know yep. that's not how it works. No. I mean, and it, nor should it be that way. Right, right. I mean, you might, you might find something that works for a while, like, uh, you know, for example, 2013, I used to have guys that used to call me at the, near the end of 2013, and they'd have this really bullish trading strategy, and they'd want me to help them quit their jobs and become full-time traders and um, because they were doing so well. And I'm like, well, mm -hmm. wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, are tra you are trading a bullish trading strategy during the most bullish market in human history, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're doing well. Of course you're going to be doing well. And that's great. I'm glad you're doing well. But if you're going to go out on your own, what are you going to do when your system stops working? Because these circumstances aren't going to last forever. Mm -hmm. And it's kind, of, it's kind of like the broken wing butterfly now. If you're a market neutral trader, we've got these broken wing butterflies people are trading on the SPX. And we've got a lot of circumstances that are just lining up right now, just like they were in 2013 for bullish traders. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like you can't lose. And I say, great, I'm glad that it's working for you. Trade it while you can, but before you quit your day job, make sure you're aware that things are going to change. And yep. when they do change, that you're prepared to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once you, but once you find a trading system, once you're over that and you get your trading system, the next thing that we come to with the second leg of the triangle is your, your psychology. Yep. Because even if you have the perfect trading methodology, if you have the holy freaking grail, it works <laughs> perfectly. Right? Uh -huh. And it works all the time. It's not going to do you any good if you don't follow it. Okay. Um, you know, if, you, if you fall apart when things get a little tough, if you lose confidence and you're using trading as your only source of income, it is over. Your trading career is over because it, it's mm -hmm. going to put you out of business. So one of the things we really focus on and I'm really passionate about is trading performance psychology. 
And that's why I personally spend about probably five hours studying psychology for in human behavior for every one hour I actually study with trading and options because it's so important. And it, it, when it comes down to it, if you're not able to follow your methodology, your results are just, they're always going to be random. So we think that's very, very important. And the third leg we talk about is the business side of trading. You know, when you get your system down, when you get your psychology right, uh, and you're right on your own, and you're trading to support yourself, then you've got to understand how to manage the cash flow of a trading business. It's not like getting a paycheck. It's not consistent. It's not the same amount of money every month. You have these really good months. You have bad months. You have losing, you have losing periods. And you need to understand how to deal with that as a person. So mm-hmm. you keep your psychology right, and you continue to trade, and you have enough money set in the background so you can do that. So that side of the triangle is very important as well. But uh, yeah. we're not here to talk about the trading triangle, but you, uh, <laughs> you can chime in if you'd like. Um, but we're here to talk about the rock system. But I figured I'd want to give you that background so you know where I'm coming from as, mm-hmm. a, as, a, um, as an instructor. So yeah. um, when I started mentoring traders, it was about nine or ten years ago. At the time, mm-hmm. I was a success and life coach. So I've always had a coaching and a teaching background. And we've always been very involved with human performance and how to get people to perform better. And uh, I had been training about a year, and it was really strange because, you know, I had been training a whole year, and I was profitable. And I'm talking to traders now, trying to teach them how to get profitable. And there were traders that would spend hours and hours researching all this stuff about options and the Greeks and how this affects that. And, I mean, they don't know all kinds of crazy things that I've never heard of. I mean, they knew a lot more than I did. And some of these people had been actually studying their entire adult lives, and yet they're still losing money on the market. So I'm thinking, well, why aren't these people, who obviously know a lot more than I know, about at least about theory, why aren't they making any progress? Why aren't they getting better? And the reason is that they spend their time focusing on the wrong things. You know, while they're out studying the theory and they're trying to look at all this thing to get the biggest edge and how positions actually, you know, all this theory stuff, I was out there actually doing live trades, paying attention, and figuring out how things actually behaved in real life. And mm-hmm. in the process of doing so, it, was, it gave me the ability to create these methodologies that were mm-hmm. very profitable, but at the same time, they went against about uh, most of what the theory of what most of the teachers were teaching at the time. Right. In fact, I was part of the options uh, trading community, and I was being mentored by somebody in the options trading work at the world that was early in my career, and he told me at the time, that'll never work. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, really? But I went ahead and did it anyway, and it did work. Mm-hmm. So eventually I put together this series of trading systems that worked really well, mm-hmm. and I, at the time I was just a one-on-one coach. I didn't have any affiliation with an SMB, I didn't sell any programs, I was a one-on-one coach, and I used to just teach this stuff one-on-one. I started with something that was uh, called an M9 trade. Now, basically an M9 trade is an extremely complex, multi-dimensional, positive theta income trade, if you know what that is, that looks at technical analysis and basically is a different trade every month. I quickly found out that, well, that's too complicated for most people. So uh, I said, well, we got to back this down. How can I get people in the market? How can I get them profitable and at a level that, that, that most people are just going to understand that that's too much work? So I started teaching broken wing butterflies. And I taught and created all sorts of broken wing butterfly strategies that I did on the major indexes. And um, I probably taught almost any adjustment strategy on a broken wing butterfly you probably think of that's effective. And it worked well. It was fine. But at the same time, in general, a broken wing butterfly, if you know that trade, for the most part, the profit potential in those are kind of low. They don't usually make a ton of money. In some markets, they're very good. In other markets, they're kind of bad. So I wanted to get people up to that complex trade that I was doing, that M9 trade, because that's where the real money is. So... What I decided to do was I set up a series of trading systems that led to a version 
or a simplified version of that M9 trade, which we call the M21. So in order to get traders at a skill level, I put together this trade called an M3. And I think you've heard about the M3, right, Alex? I think uh, maybe yeah. Nagaraj was telling me about that. Yeah, and sure. that it essentially starts out as a butterfly hedge with a call. It's designed in a manner that it reacts. So it's a butterfly with a call that reacts like a broken wing butterfly trade, if you guys know what that is. And the M3, when I put it together, was supposed to be a learning step. It was never supposed to be this, this trade. It was supposed to be a learning step. But people loved it. They come out, they started trading it, they did it, they loved it. They thought it was wonderful. So I kind of got bought it down uh, from developing anything further because I'm one-on-one -on -one coaching all these people in the F3 trade. And I'm going along doing these, uh, these broken wing butterflies and M3 trades uh, one person at a time. When Seth comes along, he's a, he was a friend of mine. I talked to him at the time. He comes along and he, uh, from SMB, Seth Freudberg, and he says, Great guy. Yeah, hey, yeah, he's an awesome guy. And he says, hey, you know that triple butterfly you used to do, which is essentially like an M9 trade? Um, he says, can you make a program for us at SMB? We would like to, we'd love you to make a program for us. And I'm like, well, gosh, gosh there's no way. The thing is, it, it's just too complicated, right? I, I'm not going to be, it's going to take, it would be a huge undertaking. But what I can do is I can, I, can, I can do something. I've been teaching some of my beginner students that's an aggressive trade. Uh, by aggressive, I mean high-yield trade called the bearish butterfly and he's like yeah hey, let's do that so that was our first program that we did uh, we did draw, uh, with SMB and from there um, I decided I wanted to get traders up to speed trading that multi-dimensional trade that M21 style so I came out with uh, I mapped out a path to get them there and we came out with the M3 program which I've been teaching which again is a, is a fulfilling butterfly profile or style trade that was designed to help people understand how to manage their position. You know, yeah, so let's talk, people at their line. Yeah, let's talk about let's talk about the management aspect of it though, um, because obviously you mentioned psychology and there's um, you're a little more active with some of these, and obviously a lot of your programs are require activity, require management, things like that, and that's when people start to mess up and get screwy, and that's also why you focus on psychology. So let's talk about that a little bit and, and the conscious and appropriate and responsible management of it and how that goes about uh, with these particular programs. Yeah, well, when I used to put people in a bearish butterfly or, or the M9 trade, there's a lot of decisions to make, and you can get into situations where there's a lot of directional risk because it's a high-yield trade. It's meant to maximize your income. When we go to a broken wing butterfly-style trade or, or an M3 trade, you get this um, for people who know income trades, you get this very flat T plus zero line or, or very flat, uh, in other words, the market can move around a lot and it doesn't draw down. So from a psychological level, people aren't so freaked out or worried about the market moving and they're not so tending to watch the market all the time. So it's, it's very easy on them mentally. They can come in, they can trade the market with something that's, I mean, the, the trade's enough so that it's active. Yep. It's perfectly enough so that it's active, but it's uh, not so active or, or it never gets in a situation where you're taking on so much risk you should really be freaked out about it. If you do, yeah, you're it doesn't, just, doesn't just stop you from trading. That's important. That right. peace of mind is important. It doesn't stop you from being able to sleep at night, which especially with options, um, especially with higher yielding or higher risk plays, which a lot of options uh, trades uh, do encompass. It's very difficult for, uh, for a person. They start to get those, um, the, for lack of better words, those butterflies in their stomach and they start to make mistakes also at the same time. Right, exactly. And we, and we try to keep this so that the risk is pretty far away from the price level, and yep. uh, we, we make early adjustments in order to, in order to do that. And um, we try and teach people where the risks are. Because an interesting thing, uh, do you guys know what T plus zero line is? I mean, would your listeners know what that is? Well, let's just uh, cover it anyway, just... Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's essentially the value of your position for any given price level of the asset. So if the Russell's at 1,000, uh, you'll have a, a graph, and you'll have this thing called a T plus zero line, which it shows you your current profit and loss in the position at the current price. And then as you, if you look at the graph, if you, if you look to the, to, the, the, to the right as the price of the asset would go up to the right, it'll show you how, your, how it affects your profit and loss in either direction. Mm -hmm. So... Um, but the thing is, we have software that projects these projections, and that software isn't 
completely accurate. And the soft and also the way they price things isn't always according to theory. In other words, it gives you a theoretical model of what your the price should the, the, your um, profit and loss should do with certain movements in the market. And uh, we want you to learn when that line is probably misrepresenting itself. And uh, if you trade just a regular broken wing butterfly, you generally don't get a feel for that because if you know what a broken wing butterfly is, it, it, it is the expiration line or the or the your graph at expiration is, is very flat. But on a butterfly with a call, you actually have what they call a hole in the expiration graph or a spot where there's a dip. And there's going to be certain management that you have to do in that dip in order to keep the line stable. And we're trying to teach you that for the purpose that you understand better uh, the, the deficiencies in the modeling software so that you can make better decisions later on, if that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. So now, um, with that, again, the, with the peace of mind that comes with that, and obviously you're focusing so much on the psychology aspect, putting these programs together, there's a lot of backtesting that goes along with that, which obviously you've done. But with newer traders that are getting involved in this, getting involved in options and things like that, um, what's your messaging um, or what are their questions with a particular strategy like this? Because nothing works every single time, obviously. Butterfly trades don't work every time. Uh, Rhino trade, for example, which is kind of a modified butterfly, uh, is one of those that have not been having success. The um, most favorite uh, strategies, I, I think, is, uh, the bearish butterfly, hasn't really worked this year uh, for many different reasons. So, um, obviously, you have different strategies to go at different times in the market, but you also have to know when exactly to shift, as you just mentioned, um, uh, that you have to, you know, it's great if you're in a, a bullish cycle, you do all your bullish setups. It's great. It's easy. It's simple. You, you know, maybe you make <laughs> a great living that year, but then you're going to have those pullbacks. You're going to have those other times where it's kind of, it bites you in the face or explodes on you, and you have to m mitigate that that disaster. So let's talk about that aspect of it as well. And when is the right time to shift? Right. And we talked about that. We talked about the, um, uh, how whatever your trade is, you're going to have periods of rough times uh, as yep. you go forward. Whatever is working wonderful today, it's going to have an environment where it's not going to do well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's going to period of time. So that's, that's something to realize when you go into trading. And when mm -hmm. you go into, just because a strategy doesn't work for six months doesn't mean it's junk. It just means that, hey, you know what, you've just had some unfavorable market conditions, maybe some poor cycle, stuff like that. Now, the M3 trade itself, yes, we, we figure it on average, right? We just, we come up with this, you know, what's the usual win-loss rate? Uh, if you do 12 in a year, because you have 12 months and you do a trade a month, generally you win nine, lose three on average. Some mm -hmm. years you don't lose any. Some years it's a little bit worse than that. Generally, it's not any worse than that. It's a, it, not historically anyway. We haven't seen it. Um, uh, so, yeah, so there are going to be certain conditions. And that's part of the thing about the M3 trade. Even in really poor conditions, you're not, you're not taking devastating losses. The losses are minor. So one of the things, the good things about having a butterfly and call configuration when we do an M3 is we, uh, we, we're essentially taking a, a, a deep in the money call. And we're balancing it off with a butterfly. And we are, um, it's going to take a certain number of butterflies to balance that off. Sometimes it takes 10, sometimes it takes 20, sometimes it takes 30, okay? Maybe, sometimes it's five. Mm -hmm. And realistically, by the number of those butterflies, you can almost tell the probability of that trade working out. The fewer butterflies you have to go, generally, the less likely you are to actually make anything. So you get in an environment like 2013, and this goes for any broken wing butterfly profile trade that was negative delta. In other words, if you, if you, the way options were priced in 2013, if you weren't positive delta, you didn't make money. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it, it's just you really couldn't get into a trade that took risk to the upside and actually make anything. It was very difficult. Um, but you could see that in the M3 trade. You could see it in the setup. You go in and you and you try to put on um, 10 butterflies with one call. 56 days to expiration, which is our entry date, there's just no way. It, it just, it, it, I mean, it wouldn't work out. You'd have to, you'd have to do backflips to get the position to level up. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when you, that's when you know you're, you're in a problematic environment. And, you know, in an environment like that, you're essentially best off to be bullish. Bullish verticals work well in that environment. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, you're taking on some downside risk, but the, 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 um, the opinion in the market is so bullish that nobody's interested in protecting their downside. 
uh, you might as well go along with them. Yeah, absolutely. So now we, um, I'm speaking with John Locke. Uh, he's, a, um, he's just what I, I call a stock market innovator. I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. Uh, the website is Locke in your success. Last name, uh, Locke, L-O-C-K-E. Has another famous John Locke. Um, so we're not going to get into that aspect of it too, but um, just as brilliant in my opinion. Um, just a different uh, category, obviously, which is trading and coaching and things like that. Um, you developed all these different systems and obviously you continue to develop, you continue to tweak and back test, even though a lot of your stuff has shown, well, all your stuff that you promote is, uh, has shown to be successful more often than not. Um, but now you have the rock trading system as well, which, um, you've teamed up with SMB capital to try to kind of bring out there and push out there and bring to the masses. And, um, talk about how that sort of traditional, or I'll put that in air quotes, traditional trading systems and programs that you put together and what the rock is and why it's, you know, why you believe this is the next big thing for you and your traders. Right. Well, the Rock trading system is designed to, as I was saying earlier, we have the M3 trading system, which is, mm -hmm. again, psychologically easy to trade. It's yep. got, um, you know, nice flat people at zero line, that type of thing, broken wing butterfly profile people at zero line. And then we have this thing I call an M21, which is a very multi-dimensional trade. Sometimes it's like a broken wing butterfly. Sometimes it's like a condor. Uh, and, and we're using technical analysis to deal with that. And that's, that was, that's the other extreme. So these are the mm -hmm. two completely different extremes. And the rock trade was designed to bring someone who trades a broken wing butterfly style trade over to that aggressive high profit trade. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it does it without technical analysis other than um, we do an entry test, which is uh, it checks out a profile. I don't know if you'll understand this, but it checks out the profile of people at zero line. We make a judgment of how the trade should be entered. Uh, so the rock trade itself, it can be like an M3 trade or it can be like a broken wing butterfly where you have a very flat T plus zero line, or it can be like a bearish butterfly or a condor trade that has a very aggressive profile. Mm -hmm. And we do this, and we do this, and it morphs back and forth. So you'll enter the trade, you'll do an entry test, you'll enter one way or another. As the market moves around in real time, we shift either to something that's generally going to accept more price movement or something mm -hmm. that's going to be very, very tight and aggressive and try and gain value very quickly. Mm -hmm. And and, and that's and why I want to bring it back up is because, so let's give an example of, um, of a trade that you would put on and let's uh, give two extremes, let's say, um, two ends of the coin, obviously one of it working and which, um, you know, one of it, well, let's just say one of it working and one of it not working and how you would adapt to it quickly, what you would see from a technical standpoint, um, to get to, but you know, what, what, what you're looking at and what you're saying, all right, I got to get out of this. I got to change this from this type of setup to now morph it into this kind of setup. Let's get a, like a real world example if, if you can provide one, which I'm sure you okay. can. Okay. Well, I can. So generally, um, if you, if you if the market is moving around like crazy, you do not want to be in a condor trade. Yep. Okay. I, I mean, this isn't all the time, but generally, if it's moving around a lot, you don't want to be in a condor trade because what happens? You get whacked on both sides, and you end up losing the trade. You'd be much better off being in a broken wing butterfly profile trade. If you're in a broken wing butterfly pro profile trade, you get times like 2013, or you get these constant upgrinds. Sometimes you get poor pricing structure in the market, and you're in a broken wing butterfly trade. And month after month, you take small loss, small loss, little gain, little gain. You know, it's just it's just this basic break even for the, for the, for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So, so you have those two extremes depending on what the market in general is doing. So we do an entry test, and we say. And we're not using technical analysis on this on this trade. On the M21, we do. But we're just saying, let's look at the T plus zero line profile. When you put a butterfly on, you look at the profile of your T plus zero line and what it costs, you can generally tell what the major participants in the market are thinking, whether they're afraid of the market moving or they think the market's going to be relatively stable. And if they think the market's going to move, you want to be in a broken wing butterfly profile. If we think the market's going to... Uh, be relatively stable. We want to get more into a condor so we can make more money. Mm -hmm. So this trade, we'll do an entry test. So say it comes in with a, um, a, 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 a what we call low volatility entry, and we enter like a condor almost. Mm -hmm. So we get this condor type of position on. 
we make from there we make an assumption. Generally, if you if you look at charting, if you've done a lot of charting for a while, generally when the markets come down, they get more volatile, right? When the markets go up, they tend to get less volatile. It doesn't happen all the time, but in I would say 80% of the time in general, that's probably the case. So that being the case, when we're in a corridor position and the market comes down, we adjust back towards a broken butterfly position or a flat gamma position. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we so as the market comes down, we flatten the T plus zero line. We prepare ourselves for larger price movements, and hopefully, we can make a small profit with the large price movements. Mm-hmm. That's that's essentially what we do. Now, if the market is goes up, you know we're, we're still in this. We're still in this uh, condor. Generally, for the most part, you're usually okay, uh, and you usually make a larger profit. If you have the flip side, and you enter in a high volatility market, generally we make the assumption that if the market goes up a certain amount, you're likely to get into a period of lower volatility, and you're likely to get smaller price moves. And you can look at any price chart, and you can look at the ATR or the average true range over the last 14 days, and you can see when the market comes down, your average true range goes up. When the market goes up, your average true range generally comes down. So um, that being the case, we're going to take this flat broken link butterfly profile trade, and we're going to push it into a, a trade that looks like a condor uh, mm-hmm. through, a various, through a series of adjustments. We're going to gradually go into a, a condor-type trade. And that's essentially the way that it works. And you're right. It, it doesn't win all the time because, there are, because like I said, you know, 80% of the time the market probably follows that pattern. The other 20% it might not. Mm-hmm. I might come, because we're not looking at technical analysis specifically for this trade, we're not making the judgment that, hey, this blow-off up move is just a, um, is, is just a retrace from a, from a bigger down move. Right? We're not making that judgment because we're not looking at technical analysis. So if that's the case and you do go up into that high game of position and the market shoots down, then that might be problematic for you. Or if you get into that high game of position and the market just shoots up um, because we're taking on a lot of upside risk at that point, again, that can be problematic for the position. Most mm-hmm. of the time, historically, it works out very well. If you look at, um, well, since the program came out in 2012, the, the track record on it's very good. Although this year has been a little bit problematic for certain types of trades, and that's one of the types of trades that's been problematic for it, this year's been problematic for pretty much almost every system. If you look at the um, the hedge funds and the major hedge funds and how poorly they performed, from the Bill Ackman to David Einhorn's, I mean, you're talking about the S&P index is up with six, six and a half percent on the year, and a lot of these major hedge funds are, are down, and they have all the tools and seems like all the money in the world, and they're, you know, nothing's perfect uh, in this. Uh, in well, this that's, that, that's exactly why broken wing butterflies on the STX right now are no-lose trades, mm-hmm. because... Yeah. The reason the market's been going up, right? But mm-hmm. they're so concerned about the downside, everybody's hedging the downside, so they're losing money. Mm-hmm. But in the process of them hedging the downside, you're getting overinflated options pricing in the SPX because they all ch- pretty much everybody hedges their their long portfolios in the SPX. Yep. So it's giving us crazy high options prices in mm-hmm. the SPX under the money where the puts are. That may, that sets up a perfect storm to put in broken wing butterflies that virtually have no risk to the upside but are fairly protected to the downside. Absolutely, and people want to learn more about um, the different uh, trade steps or, or different trading programs that you've uh, put together, you've assembled, uh, and you've back tested. Obviously, uh, we talked about uh, a bunch of them tonight. The site again is lockinyoursuccess.com. It lock is spelled L-O-C-K-E. Um, you're also a coach. You have all these great trading programs. You have a blog. There's a ton of freebies on your site as well. Um, I do encourage people to check this out because this is and the and this is so much information to take in, and so many people are already averse to the market because they still burn from what's, uh, what's happened to them so many times. The manipulation of the market, all that kind of stuff. No one's going to tell you, uh, or no one on this show is going to tell you that it's, you know, it's not a tough world out there. It's a very tough game. Um, and at times it just seemed like a video game that you just can't win and you don't have enough lives to win because it's real money involved. Um, but having the right system in place, having the right mindset in place and having the right attitude 
and looking at it as a business is very important. And those are uh, the three corners uh, or three pieces uh, of the, um, the the triangle, as you mentioned before, so eloquently, John. Um, so again, I encourage people to check out your site and follow you on Twitter and check out you on social media and also on, on YouTube so they can actually see what you're doing and what you're saying and they can see the charts, which unfortunately we don't have the liberty of having here, um, but that's why we have so many great tools online and that people can check out and they can go right from your site to get that. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, come, definitely come over and check us out. We have lots of great things going on there. We have, uh, in addition to the programs we mentioned tonight, we're doing a, a Broken Wing Butterfly Masterclass Series right now, which is fantastic and people are loving. And uh, we get stuff going on all the time. Absolutely. Yep. And uh, again, thanks to thanks so much, John, for coming on tonight, educating us, educating me as well. It's not like a lot of people think that I bring people on the show and I know everything that's going on. I also learn a, a lot of this as I go along. I'm not one of those hosts that professes to be this super expert. We're not like that. And that's what makes the show so good for so many people is that we're all learning at the same time. And um, obviously, you, you know all this because you're teaching it to us. But uh, it's a very informative and uh, an informational session for for all of us. But again, uh, there's only so much that we can cover. So I again, I encourage people to go check out your site and see what else uh, what else is out there. And again, re um, covering what we've discussed here uh, in great detail. But again, there's even more detail to cover. Options are a very tricky game sometimes, but it doesn't have to be that way. It's just um, it's just a learning curve for us because we weren't taught this in school. We are not taught this so eloquently in so many books, um, but and thanks to this show, I believe is what people me to do something at a much faster rate than um, uh, than expected. And uh, they're starting to make money uh, in different ways, and they're starting to experiment, which is cool. Indeed, it is. Yeah. So, uh, so good stuff. And I wish you the best of trading uh, as always. I'm sure you're doing uh, you're doing just fine um, with all your systems. And I appreciate you coming on, and hope to have you on again soon. Yes, it's great, and like I said, I hope to have you, you know, I hope to come back soon as well, and, and please visit our site, see what we have going, if it's if that style is for you. We have hundreds of videos there, so, uh, so check it out. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, John, and uh, happy trading for you. you got a Thank big you. day tomorrow. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Take care. Good, good night. Bye. Bye.